Cynthia. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just pray. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, before the foundations of the world you saw this day. And so, Father, we thank you for a now word, an end time word, a word that is relevant to what the people of God need to hear. Father, we just thank you, Father God. Father, I thank you that I avail myself, Father God, as an instrument unto you. I thank you that you make my tongue that of a ready writer. Let not one word that is spoken fall to the ground, but let everything that you've set to say come back to you, Father God. Oh God, complete, fulfill, fulfill, complete, accomplish. We thank you, Father, for your people today that are listening with the right heart posture, with the right attitudes. And they are wanting, Father, with great expectation to fulfill what you required of us to do. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. You know, we are in these days where interesting times, don't sit yet, where we are finding what's really legit in the spirit. You know, God is, he's, he's using these days to drive out, to expose. He's, he's authenticating things. It's like God is saying, there's a lot of people uh, when everything is great and everything is wonderful, it's easy to have a praise. It's easy to serve God. It's easy to show up. It's easy to play, you know. It's easy to do these things. But, but when it gets hard, when life don't always show up and giving you what you think you should have, and when you have to really press a little harder and pray a little more, it shows us where we really are in our faith. It shows us where we are in our true place of belief. But I want you to lift your hands this morning. I want you to say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Say, I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed coming out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Say, no matter where you put me, no matter what it looks like, I'm still blessed. Woo, now give God some praise. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Hallelujah, I am blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your seats. Take your seats. I'm glad to see you this morning. Right before I get started, I, I want to get uh, uh, Pastor Bill. Pastor Bill has a testimony that uh, he needs to share, and I want him to take a moment and share it. How many of you know the Bible says, how do we overcome the enemy? Come on, preachers. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Come on, Pastor Bill. Let's Hallelujah. defeat the enemy. Give God some praise for Pastor Bill. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. You know, um, some time ago, and we read this story uh, before in um, 1 Kings 18, it talks about um, Elijah uh, telling his servant to go and look upon the waters to see what he sees. And before that, he declared, Elijah said that I hear, like he said, the sound of rain. Yeah. And so, um, so he told his servant to go and look to see what you see. And you know the story that the servant said that I, I don't see anything. But he, Elijah knew that he heard from God. So he said, go and look again. He sure did. And so um, some time ago, a little while ago, um, I went to the doctor. And uh, 2020 was uh, just a very challenging year for both my wife and I with, um, with regard to you know, sicknesses and things like that. <clears throat> and so um, I went to the doctor to get some routine blood work done. And um, when everything came back, the doctor wrote in my chart um, that I had chronic kidney disease. And he said that, um, <laughs> you know, they like to put stages on it. Uh-huh. Right. 
So he says, you don't have one or two, but you have three. Uh -huh. And so um, my wife and I really didn't receive that, those words that he wrote down in my chart. And so um, I basically said to him, I'm gonna have to do another uh, battery of tests or basically go and look again. Amen. And so um, a little while ago, um, I did blood work again. It took uh, quite a while for them to reschedule it and everything. Um, and it led, him, led, led up into the time of the fast. And so on the first day of the fast. On the first day. First, first day. I get um, the results and everything. Uh, or I get the test done and everything. And uh, they say, uh, so I called and said, what was the results? Because I was very interested in seeing what, what the results were. And they said that uh, for some reason, for some reason, we don't see anything. It didn't go, he didn't, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father God. We thank you right now. Glory to your name, Father. My God, I thank you. Father God, I thank you right now. Father God, we thank you right now. He didn't say it was stage two or one. He said we don't see anything. So I want to encourage you today. I don't care what the doctor said. Thank you, Father God. Tell him, go and look again. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I don't care what your bank account looks like. Go and look again. Thank you, Father. Whatever, whatever, whatever. It is in your life that God did speak. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Go and look again. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You know, that scripture says that, the scripture says in 1 Kings 18, it says that Elijah went up to Mount Carmel. Now, he had already spoken the word. But then he went up to be with God. And it said that he was empowered when he went up there. As a, as a matter of fact, hallelujah, he began to run in such a way that he beat even the chariots. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So I want to encourage anybody today. Hallelujah. I want to, I want to say this. I want to say this one thing to you is that I called the doctor and I said that um, as a result of the test, um, coming back where they don't, it's not, <clears throat> it's not negative, is I don't see anything. So I told him, you need to put that in my file, that you don't, that you don't see anything. Now they said, we can't do that because we want to have a history of what you had. And I thought about it for a minute. I said, you know what? leave it in there because that's that's a greater testimony there's a record of something that you said i had i don't know how it worked out but now i don't have it so it's the before and after you have to look again hallelujah pray my strength in the lord my god hallelujah now see, you don't even get excited unless you had a bad report and you heard God and saw God turn some things around in your life. That's what makes you praise God because if God did it for him, come on, my house is next, my neighbors, come on, my co-workers, my children, God is turning some things and don't you stop believing, don't you stop trusting, come on. We stand on the promise of God. He's a promise keeping God. Hallelujah, amen. Oh man, that's amazing. That's incredible. We thank you. That is the blessings of the covenant. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm excited. Come on, sit down. Let's get into this word today. Y'all ready for the word? I'm ready for the word. I'm ready to share this word today. I am amazingly blessed. Take me um, down some. I'm, I'm very loud. I'm, I'm hearing almost like an echo. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. 
We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. I want to welcome everybody online today, all of you that are home, though maybe in the car, maybe you had to do some errands, I don't know, but I thank God for technology that we're able to use at this moment that we can stay connected to the frequency of heaven. Amen. So I'm grateful that all you guys are on this morning. If you have not yet um, told somebody, tell them to get online this morning. Go tell somebody, share Facebook. Share this with someone on YouTube. Let them know that we're on this morning and there's a word from the Lord. And I don't care what the devil say, they are prophets in the land. And God is speaking the word of the Lord. And so no matter how much the enemy tries to discredit, no matter how much the enemy wants to make us believe God's word is not true, the word of the Lord is the word of the Lord. There are those that may be speaking things. Maybe God told me he's driving out the uh, presumptuous in the prophetics. There are those that maybe are speaking. That mean they're not prophets. Maybe some are speaking presumptuously. Nathan did it when he went and told David to build a, a house for the Lord. And God said, I didn't tell you I was going to use uh, David to build a house. Nathan had to go back and tell David, I'm sorry, I spoke before God spoke to me. And there's sometimes that we can speak presumptuously. There's sometimes we can speak out of the obvious when we're prophesying. We got to be careful that when we come into these places of sometimes our heart motive and what we want to see happen, it'll get into our prophetics. And we'll start telling people what we wanted. It ain't got nothing to do with God. And so God is helping us to understand that though there are those moments, doesn't mean somebody's not a prophet. You know, we quick to say they fall prophets where they prophesied 15 things that was true so we got to make sure that we are in balance and proper perspective and understanding the prophetics we are all people and so i'm not validating voices that are not of god we driving everything out that's not god amen so i don't celebrate and validate voices that's not of god but i'm saying that to keep the record clear that they are authentic bona fide prophets and even though there was those in the days the bible says in the last days that'll be very many 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 deceptive voices mixtures and blendings of sounds it's only helping you to be sharpen more even so to find out what he's saying to you amen god is pulling us to the presence of him that you might know the voice of god for yourself amen we're in some incredible days in the new covenant and so i'm blessed to be able to share this word with you this morning let's get into this word amen we've been talking about we're talking this month about the blessings of the covenant say the blessings of the covenant the testimony you just heard was because of the blessings of the covenant. Amen. And when you say covenantly connected to God, no matter what happens, no matter what comes, you bless. You coming out of it. Amen. It may have showed up to you. God said, I'll cause all things to work together for the good, for the good, for the good of those who are, come on, called of God, for the good, for the good. Amen. And so there are those who are called of God and called to the promises of God. We're going to see God turn some things in our flavor and our favor. Tell somebody, say, just don't waver from the promise. You got to stand still and you got to be covenantly connected. You got to stay committed in what God promised. And I'm telling you, you're going to see the fulfillment of it. Amen. Okay, so the blessings of the covenant. The first thing I want to talk about, the first thing I want to give you, I want to give you the definition of covenant. The definition of covenant. Y'all ready? Okay, so covenant. We can look it up. We can read it. We can see what a covenant is. A covenant is a binding contract of agreement. It's a binding contract of agreement. A covenant, it's a pledge, it's a vow, it's a treaty, it's a guarantee, it's a commitment. Come on, all these words. It's a pledge, it's a vow, it's a treaty, it's an agreement, it's a commitment, it's a deal, it's an accord, it's a settlement. And last but not least, it's a promise. Amen. So we need to know what a covenant is. So when you hear the terminology and God is talking about, I want to make covenant with you, or when you hear God tell, talks about the covenant that you see all throughout scriptures, you got to know that God is serious about what he's coming in agreement to do concerning your life. He said, I swear, he told Abraham, I swear I'm going to bless you. And as long as you stay committed to what you have agreed with, with God, in God, you're going to see the blessings of God. It's just a moment of time. You got to know that at any second, no matter what is happening, God is going to turn it in my favor. I was thinking this morning when I came in about all the circumstances that show up in our lives that want to make us believe God has lost his position and what he promised. Are y'all hearing me? I don't care what happens. I don't care what shows up. The promises of God. And amen. God swore he going to bless Abraham's seed. Are you a part of the covenant of Abraham? You, have you been engrafted? Do you know God has a promise over your life? And it's bigger than what you're living right now? It's larger than what is happening all around you? God said, I'm telling you, if I got, I burned down a whole city to get you out. 
God is so serious about what he's planned for his people. So he's talking about covenant. He said, listen, I made a covenant with you. One of the reasons why we're sharing this, not only is it our 20 years, two deals with of covenant, uh, God is wanting you to understand prophetically what he's speaking in this hour. And he's talked about the blessings that's getting ready to show up at the covenant people house. He's talking about the blessings that is getting ready to qualify you and make everybody look at you and say, what's going on with you? Why? Because I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Why? Because I'm a covenant keeping woman. I've signed on to the agreement with God and I'm not letting go. Amen. Amen. The spirit of the covenant does this. The spirit of the covenant always enhances and it upgrades your life. The spirit of the covenant was written and given to enhance and upgrade your life. Genesis 30. Let's go here. I got some scriptures I want to lay down. I want to share some stuff with you. We're going to walk through a few things. Genesis 30 and 27. Let's, let's go here. It says, but Laban, Laban said to him, if I have found favor in your sight, stay with me. For I have learned from the omens and divination and by experience that the Lord has blessed me because of you. He said, name your wages. Now, he's talking to Jacob. He said, name your wages. <laughs> I'm going to laugh. <laughs> name your wages. He, let, let, me, let me go back. Laban, Laban said, he said, he said I, I found favor in, if I found favor with you, please don't leave me. Right. He said, please stay with me because I've learned from all the omens of divination. He said, I've been sitting with other gods, and I've learned from all of them that the Lord has blessed me because of you. <laughs> he said, I've been hanging out with some other spirits, but I recognize there's something on you that's different. And what's on your life has qualified me for what I'm living right now. I got what I have because I'm connected to you. My life is enlarged because I'm connected to you. There's things that is happening in my life because I'm connected to you. He said, he said name your wages. Oh, my God. Somebody is about to make some new contracts, and somebody is getting ready to recognize that because you are in the earth and because you walked up into their business and because you have relationship with them, that there are some things you have extended to their life that they didn't have until you came. You better know who you are, covenant keepers. You better know the promises of God over your life that you don't get caught up in the sound of what's happening in the world. I, I don't care how many people being defeated on your street. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we blessed of the Lord. I don't care what nobody else is doing. They can bring you 50 bad reports. My house is standing. The favor of God is at my house. Amen? Why? Because I have not backed up and reneged from the promises of God. Amen? So listen to this. He said, he said, name your wages. He said, and I'm going to give it to you. Jacob answered him and he said, you know how I have served you and how your possessions, your cattle and your sheep and your goats have fared with me. He says, for you had a little before I came. He says, but when I showed up, it's increased. It's multiplied and abundantly. The Lord has favored you with blessings. He says, why? Because I showed up in your life. Laban, you know you blessed because of me. You, you know your life. You wouldn't have all these cattle. You wouldn't have been able to stay on that job that long every time you calling me to pray for you and pray with you and stand with you and you want to get the blessings of God over your life because you recognize where they come from. And so people will find you. They'll run you down. Come on, they'll call you. You may not hear from them ever till they got a problem. Right. And then they'll call you. Why? Because they need the blessings that is on your life. They say, I'm going to go find the, there's a separated thing called the holy prophet. Right. There's, there's another group of people. See, we got people speaking, but then there's another group of people that are talking. The Bible called these people holy. He says, there was another group of believers. Everybody may be saying they're Christians, but then they're the holy Christians. Yeah. They're the ones that set apart and favored with God, and they have kept the promise, stayed faithful. God said, when they speak, the angels of God shows up. When they speak, come on, heaven begin to move on their behalf. And there are some people believe in God and know the word of God that's working in you more than you believe it for yourself. He says the blessings on your life has caused people to increase. The blessings on your life have caused some people to connect with you because they want to be blessed. The blessings on your life, you got to be careful when you house the blessings of the covenant. Because people are trying to get with you that ain't qualified to be with you. You got to be careful when you understand that you have blessings on your life. You just can't carry yourself anywhere and be a part of any old thing. Why? Because I'm blessed. I recognize when I come into your life, come into your house, or come into on your job, that I know what's on me is going to bring a favor of God on you. And I got to be careful how I use the favor on my life. 
Are y'all here? You got to be careful how you go take the favor that God has given you and begin to extend it to people who God don't want to be blessed. You're in a season right now where God is separating. He's severing. He's calling out what is his. He's saying, listen, right now, you're going to have to evaluate who's supposed to be in your next. Why? Because God is getting ready to make a distinct separation of what he's blessing and what he's not. I said in 221, God told me, no longer are, is the grace going to be extended to uphold stuff that God ain't in. God is dealing with rebellion. And he's calling some of us out of situations. Why? Because you have seen the favor that has kept you comfortable in some situations that God is no longer undergirding. And he's saying, this is the season. Come on. I'm not underwriting that no more. And he's trying to draw his people out. He's saying, you're going to have to recognize who you are. Tell somebody, they better recognize that I'm blessed. They, they better see the favor of God on my life. Can you see I'm blessed? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Don't get confused by what car I drove up in. Don't get confused by my house. I'm blessed. Are y'all hearing me? I'm blessed beyond my shoes. I'm blessed beyond my hairstyle. I'm blessed beyond the job, the money. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And the blessings is not predicated on the exterior. Okay, I'm getting ready to show y'all something right now. I'm blessed. Somebody say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Laban, Laban understood. <laughs> Laban recognized no other God in his life that he had dealt with was able to do what he saw come through Jacob. People recognize that there's something on you that they don't have on them. And Laban was so serious about it, he kept trying to trick. You know the story, Jacob? He kept trying to trick Jacob. He said, if you stay and work with me seven years, he said, you're going to be able to marry the woman you want. So you got to be careful right there, because see, you'll get tricked with people because you're desperate for something for yourself. You better be careful, because you can be so desperate for a man, you'll be hanging out with his sisters and cousins them. Y'all hear me? You done became friends with the whole family. They invite you over for family dinners, meals. Come on, everybody wants you to come. Won't you call that girl? What's her name? And you'll be hanging around. Come on. Not recognizing that I'm keeping myself and I'm holding to the promise of God. And you'll be hanging around with people because there's something you want out of it that God don't want for you. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Because for some reason we believe as believers, let me go here. We believe as believers that because we bless, we can do anything, go anywhere, hook up with everybody, and guess what? God going to keep us. And God said, I'm going to tell you something right now. You hang out with the wrong people. You're going to find yourself overworked, woe out, come on, tired, stressed, because they're going to use you because they see what's on your life that you don't value that's on your life. Lord, help me, Jesus. Laban recognized that there was something on Jacob's life, and he valued it. He said, okay, let's make a deal. Lying spirit. He said, I'm going to, guess what? You, seven years, seven years. If you stay with me for seven years, he said, I know you really want Rachel. He said, but if you stay with me for seven years, I'm going to give you that woman, the one that you want. Y'all know the story. Jacob worked seven years. Stayed in that man's field, blessed him. He multiplied in cattle. He multiplied in sheep. Come on, everything around his life. In, in other words, let me give it to you in, in, in this term. His stock went up. Yeah. Yeah. His investments went through the roof. Do y'all understand that? that? That means that he was living large. Simply because Jacob came to his house and wanted to marry his daughter. And so Jacob said, I'm going to get something out of this. So he began to use him. To get something that he wanted. But look, but look at the story. Look at the story. Look at the story. Genesis 12 and 1. Now in Haran, the Lord has said to Abram, he said, go away from your country. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Before I go deeper, the reason why Jacob was blessed, because Isaac was blessed. The reason why Isaac was blessed is because Abraham was blessed. He was living out the covenant. He understood that the only reason I'm blessed is because I position myself with people. I've learned how to sit up under obedience. I've submitted myself to the right order. And if you do what is right, 
and you're connected with what is right, then you're going to live out of what is right. You're going to see the blessings just like your four forefathers saw that was blessed if you keep doing what they did to continue to be blessed. But when you try to change and go outside of your own, then the blessings of the Lord is no longer obligated to remain with you. But Isaac, he said, I'm staying in alignment. Isaac was, listen, not Isaac, Jacob. Jacob was so smart. We can call him whatever. Jacob said, listen, I recognize the flow of blessings. He said, and I'm going to stay connected in this covenant of genealogy. Why? Because my, my, listen, I, I recognize my granddaddy was blessed. Anybody understand the covenant? You didn't just show up. Somebody prayed for you. We didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to live. No, you know, you had prayers being prayed for you that you just keep showing up to the things of God. Why? Because somebody has prayed for you. And no matter what you do, you find yourself right back up in God. No matter what is going on in your life, come on, crazy, chaotic. You're trying to do it your way, but you find yourself right back up, back up in God. Why? Because God made a promise and he swore to your great, great granddaddy and your great, great grandmama that he's going to bless you. And he'll do whatever he has to do to run down, tear up stuff and say, no, I got to rescue you out of the drug house, come on, the whole house. I got to rescue you out of the bad relationship. Why? Because I made a covenant promise to your great granddaddy and I'm a covenant keeping God. And you are breathing because of the covenant of God that has been over your bloodline. Let me finish. He said, now in Haran, the Lord has said to Abram, this is what the Lord said to Abraham. Now we're going to talk about the covenant. Of Abraham. He said, go away from your country. Get from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. Now check this out. I'm going to stop right here because I want you to know this story. Abraham's family was a family that lived in a place called um, um, Ur. And this family that he grew up with, it wasn't like they wasn't like going to church wasn't like they weren't people who, who was trying to serve the God, the God of Abraham. Well, it wasn't God of Abraham yet, the God of Moses. Because they were still up under some of the old covenant things that were still up under the law of Moses. Abrahamic covenant started after God visited Abraham and told him to leave his family because he wanted to draw a new covenant that would bless his people in a different way. And so Moses had a covenant. And up under the Mosaic covenant, how many of you know that up under that covenant there was restrictions? As soon as they sinned, they died. They had to try to keep the law. The law was so restrictive. The law bound these people in so many ways that they couldn't even keep them. They had 600 and something laws that was added to the laws that they was given that the, the children of Israel was trying to keep it and they couldn't keep it. And so here now God said, this is hard for these people. He says, why? Because man will keep adding stuff to you. You can pray all day. And they say, well, you know what? Maybe you need to pray. Maybe you need to pray five more days. You pray five days. They say, well, let's give me another day. Pray on Sunday too and on Saturday. Come in. See, man keep adding because in our own flesh, this is what happens with us. We try to work out our salvation in our own flesh. We, we try to do it in our flesh, in our own strength because we feel so guilt and we are so condemned because we have thoughts that we think that we shouldn't and we have not learned yet how to cast them down. We have activities that we get involved in with other people Sometimes that God doesn't want us in, but we're so tightly connected and we keep saying, man, I keep messing up. How many of y'all know? We, we keep doing stuff that we know is not right sometimes. And sometimes we end up in situations that we feel so obligated and we feel so burdened by certain sins and certain activities that we don't know how to find ourselves out. So we try to create more religious structures. So the more we create religious structures, we keep you busy. Okay. You're busy. You're so busy in doing stuff in, 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 in church service and doing ch church, church, you know, church. You're so busy fixing the chairs and cleaning the bathroom that you don't take time to come to the altar yourself. Let the chairs. Jesus, say, Jesus told him, he said, suffer these children, leave these children alone. Well, you know, you know how church, we know we show up, we got to complain about everything. Um, you know, um, you could be in, you ever been in praise and worship? No, you've been in that praise and Worshiping God, somebody come and say, Pastor Cynthia, they in the back with the crowns drawing on the floor. You came and disturbed me out of the presence of God with some children in the back with some crowns on the floor that we can pick up and clean up later. That so disturbed you 
that you didn't acknowledge, you had a time of visitation with God, you had a moment to be before the presence of the Lord, that the ark of God's glory was upon you and it was right there in your prayer, and you was worrying about who was going, that's what happened with Mary and Martha. See, sometimes we're busy. He said, you take, you don't even understand the important things. You are worried about the stuff that is going on with people. We gossiping, we trying to find out who's the latest sleeping with who, who boyfriend is what. We all on social media in the church. We can't even listen to the word no more. We too distracted. While you sitting here listening, you be surfing. It calls you. It calls you. Come here. Come here. I want to tell you the latest. Look. Look what's happening on Facebook. Look what's happening on Instagram. It begins to draw you into a place because guess what? I'm so busy trying to keep up with everybody else. I'm missing my moment in God for me. And when Christ sees show up like they are right now, you ain't got nothing in you. Because now we mad with the people on Facebook. Because every idol coming down now. They coming down. You better hold on. You better hold on. Because God's getting ready to shake all your social media world. All your sensational superstars and the preachers you got online that you don't go to church to no more. Uh huh. The ones that you don't, don't leave, believe. Listen, he's getting ready to shake everything that's not rooted in the truth of the word of God. So if you got idols, if you made people idols, if you made busy being about the church stuff idols, if you made hiding behind church stuff an idol, God's shaking everything. He's saying, do you want me with me by myself? Because God ain't doing no 15 relationships with one. He said, I broke covenant with you, and I swore I was going to bless you. And I'm running after you. Why? Because I made a promise to your great-granddaddy and your great-grandmama. They came up before me and prayed. And I promise because of the faithfulness that you don't have any idea that they sacrificed on the behalf of you. You have no idea what they went through to make sure, God, you bless my children's children's children. And we show up in life like, you know, God owe me something. You ain't had to go through the hell because your great-grandmama was praying some stuff off of your life. And we don't even understand. And, and Jacob understood. He said, listen, I'm getting ready to get the covenant. I'm getting ready to get the blessings. Y'all playing. Okay, let's keep going. Let me, let, let, me, let me keep going. Listen to this. He told Abraham, he said, leave your family. The closest people in your life sometimes to block you. I'm talking about the closest people. He says, leave your, rel listen what he says, get out of your country. Why? The whole country was polluted. As a matter of fact, these were, listen to this, listen to this. Abraham came out of some of the most astute systems that they had put in place spiritually. These people were smart. The Chaldeans wrote the calendars. They studied the stars. There's a difference between astronomy and astrology. And so we got to know that these people study certain things. They were so brilliant. They created things that was going to help people to know the day from the light, the months, the years, the calendar of events, when the sun did this and the moon did that. They was tracing. They were understanding how to be able to now teach these things so people can have a greater intelligence of how to deal in the things of the spirit. And so the Mari prophets say Mari. The Mari prophet shows up, just teach y'all a little bit, because they came from up under the systems they had created. The prophetic was all the way here, ain't going nowhere, they're going to be here when you leave, and no matter how mad you get, and you don't like folks, and you get upset, that is not going, because the prophetic is the spiritual and supernatural realm. It's beyond one person saying something that they shouldn't have said, or you get mad because you think they shouldn't have done it. See, it's beyond that. Those Mari systems that was established out of Abraham, so I don't want you to think that they didn't have some spiritual roots. They had spirit stuff going on. It just was polluted. Just like we see a lot of things polluted today. They had stuff going on. They was working. They was working in the temple. They was praying. They had all kind of things going on that they had established to create order and structure. They were called these Mari prophets. They had all those things in place. But I'm going to tell you, in it became polluted. Because as they was trying to monitor and man and, um, and structure out and establish, they themselves was allowing stuff in their hearts that began to corrupt what God had put in place. And God said, now I'm going to draw a new covenant. Abraham, he looked among the whole country. He said, Abraham, I, I need you to leave. I need you to leave, son. Abraham said, Lee, this is all I know. Like my family, my father was like the pre, I mean, this is all we know. Like our family is like, this is what we do, Jesus. I mean, well, he didn't say Jesus at that time. He said, God. And so as he was leaving, God said, I want you to leave. He said, leave your relatives. Look what he said. Leave your country. Get up out the city. 
come from your relatives and come out of your father's house. Now that's deep. Because what God was saying to him, he says, get from familiarity. Hello? God said, the first thing I got to do when I bring you into a new place with me, I got to break every soul tie and every familiar relationship in your life. Because some of y'all are doing what y'all do because you've seen other people do it, that you made gods. Come on. That you made gods, that you've submitted yourself to those systems because you believe so much in the ancestral things. Come on. That we have seen that had nothing to do with God. So he said, I know they took you to church. I know you practice. I, I was talking about this the other day with somebody I was doing an assessment with. We were talking about this. And I, you know what? When I was growing up, I remember my mom and them used to have these people come to the house and pray. This is going to take some of y'all, some of y'all somewhere. You remember they used to have the prayer bands or people come to your house and they pray. These ladies used to come to my house, Warena, and um, they prayed because my mama was supposed to be spiritual, even though she cussed us out. <laughs> yeah, they on the tongues all right. My mom used to curse us out. You ever seen people go to church on Sunday? They're so sanctified. As soon as they leave the church, they start cussing you out in the parking lot. Some of them in the church. You're right. But my mom used to curse us out. My mom used to curse. She would make us go to church. She didn't always go. But they picked us up and took us to church when we were kids. We would stay in church with the ladies. You know, the mothers in the church would take you. Their mothers were there first, and the mothers left last. And so they was there. And these ladies came to my house. I was a young girl. And they used to come there walking around, praying, speaking in tongues. I didn't know what they were doing because it just sounds strange to me. But they would take, at the same time they was praying, I would go open the freezer and see somebody's name written in the freezer. Oh, no, no, no. Listen. They would take those names and mix them into some water or whatever it was to freeze them because they was practicing, hear me, that was witchcraft. But do you know those ancient spirits came out of Africa? And so we begin to practice sometimes in our new place in God, we begin to have ancestral spirits creep into our worship and into what we do that we say is separated unto God, and we begin to believe it's okay because what they did made us believe it was okay. And God said, Abraham, I need to do something new. He said, I need you to leave your daddy's house. What he was saying, leave your daddy's gods. Come out from your father. He was saying, leave all the pagans, leave the pagan worship, leave the pagan practice. He says, get up out of there because you can't pray to me and do voodoo. Okay. They called those people spiritualists. There are some people that can prophesy a word of God to you, sit in church, Sit there. They pray. They pray on people who look like they lost. Y'all sitting in church, don't know God. We speak in the word. You refuse to receive it. Then you blame the pastors. But the Bible says you're going to learn how to do this thing. You're going to learn how to guard your own heart and guard your own mind. We're going to learn how to do that in this hour because witches and stuff is getting ready to fly. Like you ain't never seen before. They're coming out of the terrestrials. These ancient spirits ain't playing. And the reason why they're here is because they've been able to find a generation that will give access for them now to come back upon the earth. And you're warring with stuff that goes way back to your grandfather. Oh, y'all better hear me this morning. You're warring with stuff that was conquered so long ago through a bloodline in your family that these demon spirits that operate out of familiarity, they show back up because you're just sitting in church and you have all your gates open. And they show back up with familiarity and they begin to remind you and they begin to now because they house the fowls of your bloodline. And so they begin to do practices and do things that make you believe it's okay for you to keep doing. But God told Abraham, he said, when I want to bring the blessings of the covenant to a person, to a family and break and bring a new generational order, he said, the first thing I do is tell you to kill every other God that was there before I showed up. You're going to deal with these familiar practices and gods and oaths and omens and divinations and all the things we got going on, marine spirits. Come on. We got all this stuff coming out of the sea. Lord, why am I here? We can't come. Listen to me, y'all. You will never be able to fully sit in this place of the blessings that God promised over your life. No matter what is going on, he said, I'll give you peace. The covenant of God. He says, what I've given you out of kingdom is called shalom. He said, it's peace. It's, it's like everything can be going on. And I'm like, hey. That's right. 
Well, what's going on? Honey, God got me. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I trust him. He's going to turn it around. <laughs> People are looking at you saying, just keep watching because the testimony come out of this test, honey, because I'm not backing up on what God said. He brought me through too much hell. You weren't there when God brought me through all the stuff I've gone through. So I'm going to stand on the word of God and watch God part another Red Sea and bring me over. He's going to cross me out of this because he's faithful to his promise. And so sometimes you got to be careful because you will find yourself set, set back because you are now operating my time, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you are now operating in practices that are summoning. Okay. I just need a moment to teach y'all this. Hold that. You are now operating in behaviors that you ignorantly don't understand. Even when we talk about, um, what's that thing they do, Judy, called the, um, the dance? What is it? Yoga. yoga. <laughs> Even when we're doing yoga, do y'all know how much we're mixing in? I think, Tracy, you was telling, we were talking about this the other day. When we talk about occult practices, I don't even know why I'm here, but I'm going there. Occult practices. Do you know that you showed up in a time in the earth that you did not understand the reverence of blessings? You did not understand, you didn't honor, because life becomes easy when you're blessed. <laughs> Hell pass you by and they'd be messing with all your friends and all, and you'd be sitting there saying, why are they going through it? What's, what is the big deal? You don't know it because you've been living up under the covenant of the blessings that your grandmama and granddaddy prayed over your life. So hell for, for you ain't di it's different from the hell they're going through. Why? Because I'm blessed because I was born in the right bloodline. And somebody did what God told Abraham and they ran and they connected to the Abrahamic covenant. And they said, I'm staying in line with what God did for Abraham. Why? Because there was a covenant over Abraham that God had promised. He said, I swear I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to bless everything that's connected to you for generations to come. And they began to align themselves just like Isaac. Oh my God, they aligned themselves just like Jacob. They said, I'm staying up under the blessing because no matter what house I end up in, I'm going to bring increase. Whatever job I end up in, they're going to be blessed. Whoever connects in my life their life's going to be enlarged and enhanced why because I'm blessed yeah. Yeah. and you got to be careful in this hour because the enemy is trying to rob the blessings he's trying to manipulate you and fool you why because we are being shaken because we've seen some things come that appear to be like it's coming against the church and God said, are you kidding? It's coming against the organization. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. It ain't affecting the organism. It's affecting the organization. Oh, y'all better hear me up in here. He said, I'm tearing down every system that man has built that has not been beneficial based on the covenant that I made with Abraham. I'm going all the way back, and I'm going to tear down the altars. They have built stuff. In the house of God. God said, I ain't never tell them. You got to know something is wrong when I counsel people. And they tell me they end up in counsel sessions. What's wrong with us? That we go on clubhouse and have conversations. About, you know, I've been at this church for 12 years. And the pastor been touching me in the back room. And he, um, you know, he raped two children. Why are you still there? No, let's talk about the pastor. Let's talk about you. Anytime you are bound in any system that was put in place to defeat your purpose of increase and favor, why are you still there? Why? Why? What practices that is in you that you have not uprooted that came from a bloodline somewhere that is drawing you back and opening up doors for you to begin to find yourself practicing mixtures? Because I love God, but I, that's okay too, right? And that okay? My mom and them did it. My cousin and them did it. Everybody did it. So I'm in the tradition of what everybody did. It ain't got nothing to do with God, and it has nothing to do with covenant. So my life is constantly in a turmoil. I'm constantly seeing that there is things in my life that are so unstable. I can't seem to get myself together. What's wrong? What is happening? He says, because you got mixtures in you. You have a lot of altars you got to tear down. What you mean? Because we like to pretend and make us believe because we go to church and we sit in that chair and y'all smile at me. I don't know what y'all do when y'all leave out of here. I, I have no idea. Don't blame me. I'm blessed. 
I'm living a life of God. I'm not sneaking. I'm not hiding. I'm not trying to pretend. I'm not manipulative. I'm not conning. I'm not doing it. And in this season, I ain't doing a whole lot. I'm so locked into Jesus, I'm praying for me. And I'm going to tell you right now, you better hear what God told Abraham. He said, Abraham, if you're going to be a part of what God is blessing now and what God is moving in now and what God is establishing now, you better find yourself out of every covenant relationship that is not of God. You better sever and start cutting and telling people bye. Why? Because your life. Why? Because if I'm in covenant, come here, baby. If I'm in covenant with her, if me and her are in covenant, covenant, that means a contractual agreement, right? right. That means I made an agreement with whatever she have in her life that it has access to mine. Right. So if I make a covenant agreement with her, this is my girl, this is my girl, honey. We ride and die. Let me tell you what we do. We, we do it all the way there, me and her. This is my girl. You know what I'm saying? So now this is my girl and my loyalty to her can become idolatry. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. I can be so loyal to who she is and overlook all the wrong things she got going on. Don't understand me because my heart is open to her. The gates are being infiltrated. Oh, Lord, help me. By everything that is coming through her life. Because I can't seem to break the soul tie that the devil set me up in because he saw that I had a place in my life that was not willing to yield and obey God in everything God told me. No matter how long it took, no matter if it looked like it wasn't going to show up, the enemy saw that your grandmama and them had the same issue. And he took a weak bone out of familiarity and say somebody was breaking stuff but they didn't deal with this. Wow. He comes now because I'm emotionally crippled. Why? Because the greatest way he comes through is to crack foundations of your soul. He comes through, your mama wasn't there, your daddy was on drugs, somebody was missing, you was abused, you was raped. You know, you went through, how many of us got them stories? Lord, help us, Jesus. You know, I was broken, they were alcoholics, everybody beat me, they left me, they did all these things to me. The enemy say, oh, oh, little soul, soul that have not allowed the Spirit of God to heal those things in you. You have identity issues. You're broken. You're rejected. So now, guess what? We come along and me and her hook up. Why? Because I'm trying to get her to feel something in me that only God can feel. But she broken too. Help me, Jesus. Why? Because spirits attract to each other. I hope y'all getting this online today. I'm going straight after the devil. Because if we don't wake up, we're not going to see the blessings that God is getting ready to show to his people. God is getting ready to make a distinct separation for those who can trust him. Those who have left everything and say, all I got is God. I'm trusting Jesus. These are the people that God said, that's where the, that's where the ark rested. It rested in this man named Obed-Edom house. I told you his name meant o obedient Edom. I'm going to obey God no matter what. Knees knocking. I'm going to obey God. The promises, I'm going to obey you, Lord God. I'm going to trust you. I know this too shall pass. Why? Because he keeps reminding us what he did before. And if we have a real clear understanding that we can track what God did, we can know what God's going to do. Amen. That's why you got a word. That's why he told everybody to leave a letter. You read the story of harlots. You read the story of drug addicts. Well, you, read the story of, you read the stories of murderers, people on the run. You, meet, you read the story of rebellious ones. He said, it don't matter what they did. When I draw a covenant with them, who I am, the greatness of me, begin to overshadow what's not great in them. Why? Because in a covenant, the one who has the greater always influences, overshadow, overtake the one that's lesser. And so I could be in a covenant with a person, are y'all getting this, that has things in their lives that are open to other things. And I'm not really sure if I should say something. Why? Because then I may drive her from my life. And I really don't want her to be from my life. Why? Because I'm so tightly connected because she's benefiting me somewhere in my broken stuff that I won't take to God and let him heal. So now, even though it's dysfunctional, and even though you sometimes don't want me to come to church, want me to pray, say, girl, let's go to the club, let's go hang out, let's go get a drink, I'm going to fall in right on you because I need a man and I'm desperate just like you, child. I want to be saved, I want to be married. And I'm going to pray this man, please let him be saved, let him be saved, let him be saved, let him be saved. But I'm not behaving as a godly woman. I'm, I'm not behaving. My behavior is not becoming of attracting, Lord help me, Jesus, somebody who is in Christ. But yet I want someone in Christ because I believe I can walk around in my life dressing up to fool everybody to make them believe I'm blessed because I wear Gucci shoes. 
I, I want people to believe I'm blessed because I got Louis Vuitton purses. I want people, y'all, oh, y'all quiet now. Okay. I want people to be blessed because I drove up in a Mercedes Benz. I'm trying to fool people to make them believe I'm blessed because I manipulated my way to get a promotion on my job. I didn't even qualify for it, but I manipulated my way. But I want everybody to believe I'm blessed because they taught me. They taught me through my societal clubs and all my Greek organizations and all the stuff I'm involved in. I'm going straight there today. I am a prophet of the Lord. Say whatever you want to say. But God's judging every system of the world that man has created to put people in bondage, to trap people, to make them feel they're obligated, committed to continuously do something that they won't, that God never said. Bring the idols down today, God. Bring the idols down. Let Jehovah be God and every other God be a liar. He shall bring them down. So now it's too many people broken. I was crying all night trying to put together a message to say, God, how do I have enough time to tell this to these people? How do we take off the mask and be truthful? How do we just deal with the stuff that's in the church and in our lives that we keep showing up everywhere bleeding and people just kind of overlook it? Why? Because we're too busy. And if I start hitting your devils, I'm going to have to deal with mine. So now, when I tell myself, in this unhealthy relationship, whether it's a man, whether it's a woman, I don't care what it is, because people are so tightly connected to people, places, and things. Right? That's why he said, leave your country, because you got a soul tie there. Lord, help me, Jesus. You can have a soul tie with a city. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't heard people talk about their city so like the city is a God. Oh, no, no, ain't nothing better than, oh, no, no, honey. I'm, you know where I'm from? Woo, honey, I'm from New York. New York, New York. We sing the whole song. We want everybody to know I'm from New York, and New York is the best. And I could be setting people up to a demise because I want you to come to New York. Ain't got nothing to do with God. But it's some kind of ambition you have in your belly that the, the enemy is stirring because you feel incomplete, unfulfilled because you don't measure up to what somebody made you to believe success is. Right. Amen. You got a lot of money, but you're going to hell. You got a big career. God has blessed you. You're doing amazing things, and that's a wonderful thing. But can't no glory go to God because you're too busy shining so bright in what you've accomplished. Can't nobody see Jesus, Christian. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Can't nobody see Jesus. And you got saved to be a living epistle. You got saved to be a witness and a testimony. We can't even lift our hands and praise God in the house of God no more. What robbed your praise? Did a pandemic take it? What robbed it? Were you really praising God before the pandemic showed up? Because a pandemic can't take my praise. Famine can't take my praise. Life can't take my praise. People leaving my life can't take my praise. I got a praise because I got a covenant with God and it didn't start with nobody. As a matter of fact, the covenant was originated with God and not man. God had a thought that he was on a mission to recover his people. God had a thought to increase and enlarge your life. God had a thought that you would come into the earth and rule just like him. God had a thought that you would have dominion. God had a thought that you would take over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air. He had a thought in him. He said, I want to put myself on the earth because I'm going to rule through those. That in the earth, somebody say covenant. covenant. Somebody say I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Because, of the because of the covenant. My time is just about out. Let me finish this. Glory, glory, glory. Word. The word blessing is taken so casual today that we don't really believe in the power of the blessings. Thank you, baby. When we look into the old covenant, we see how the significant, the significant, the blessings were. Wake up, generation. Wake up, everybody. I was telling them this morning that Deaconess Glenda sent me this thing. I think it came from Bishop Jay. And he was going through the historical line of how things that took place in history. And he was saying that, you know, they was talking about sometimes you show up in a generation that you've been so blessed in, that you begin to discredit your grandmama, that you don't recognize the hell these people stood through. We're trying to drive out all the wisdom in the earth, the older generation that we need, because their stories give us strength. Their stories help empower us. 
their stories. The devil is after a generation because they house something in them. They have the memory of the blessings of God. They have the memory of the testimonies of what they saw God did. And the enemy is trying to come after the elderly, but I decree and declare today that the devil is a liar and that God begin to recalibrate their immune systems. That God begin, even as they're changing, oh, they're changing and they are putting new drugs out. They are causing a lot of things that is messing with, come on, the sound waves of our systems. But Father, I thank you today in the name, come on for a few seconds. Reba, pray for your grandmama. Pray for your granddaddy. Pray for your mom. Pray for the older. Pray for the leaders that was once standing. We need them, Father. We pray for those historic roots, those historic writings. We pray for those historic um, life experiences, their wisdom. We need it to strengthen what's ahead. God, the devil will not rob this generation of everything they need to have in them to be able to accomplish what you called them to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, pray in tongues. We pray of our bloodline. We thank you for the best portion you called for us to have. We recover it out of the bloodline. We thank you, Father God, that you established us to be blessed. My grandmama prayed for me. My great granddaddy prayed for me. There was a covenant promise that I will come forth, Father God, and live this life, the one that you was working on before the foundations of the world. And you called somebody in my bloodline to get right. You called them to line up that the blessings of God will come into 2021 and it will be made manifested in my life because I just believe I stay committed to the covenant and now we get to live it we get to live it nobody talks about they said the Spanish flu 60 million people were dying nobody talks about the Cold War who remembers who among us can remember the suffering when people lost their jobs famine came and people was homeless 1930 the Great Depression who remember the soup lines around the corner that's among us now? Who can remind us that we're sitting home now in a pandemic with cable TV? We can watch Netflix with air condition, lights on. They say put on a mask. Woo! Baby, we bucking, kicking, screaming, shouting. We ain't doing nothing y'all tell us to do. And we sitting home, and check this out, and you can still order Uber to bring you food. That sounds like upgraded living from the blessings. That sounds like you was being upgraded and you didn't even appreciate it, value it, and understand it. That means somebody was praying for you that when another pandemic comes around, we ain't gonna be in the same place. Somebody was praying for you. Somebody said, because of the blessings of the Lord, they said, you may have taken out 60 million, but you ain't taken out that kind this time. Somebody was praying for me. Somebody was praying for you because of the covenant agreement that was marked and set a long time ago. You can show up in 2020 and the enemy can draw something out now that comes against us. And we can stand and say, not my house. I'm blessed of the Lord. I stand in the covenant blessings of God. And because the blessings are in my house, my light's going to stay on. My cup is going to stay filled. Sickness, infirmity, and disease cannot come nigh our dwelling. Come on up in here. I can open up my mouth because I have a new covenant. I've come out of the old covenant to a new one. I house the mouth. My mouth carry the authority and the words of God by the Spirit. I could stand. He said, call it back. When something does not operate the way God originally intended, he said, I've set something in your mouth called authority. Say authority. You can lose everything and get it right back. He told him, he said, take my coat, I'll get another one. Take my shirt, I'll get another one. Take my house. There's over seven billion people on the planet. Somebody coming out of one for me. Cause he will never leave me homeless. You better come on. He will never leave me without, I got a promise. Anybody got a promise? I got a promise. He said, I'll never leave you fatherless. I'll never leave you homeless. God said, I will provide all your needs according to my riches and glory. Why? By Christ Jesus. Anybody in here have a promise? I got to go. My time is up. I got to do that another day. Stand to your feet. Y'all so casual. I'm sitting here preaching. And some of y'all just like this. Because you ain't got it yet. You don't have it yet. The Spirit of God. The, I say the Spirit of God not religion, I say the Spirit of God has to hit your life. 
for you to wake up out of your stumba, so you can wake up out of your lackadaisical sleep, so you can wake up out of this place of entitlement. Because the world system have fooled us. But God is trying to draw out of a place now and separate a people that shows forth the glory of God. He said, I want them to look at your life and see light. I want to be able to send you in dark places and you can take back the mountains. You think God is telling you, I want you to just sit in the church all day? I, I don't read that in the scriptures. I don't see that. Who told you that? We got to come out of the old covenant to the new one. The old covenant empowered you. <laughs> he said, you can, you can go anywhere, do anything. Jesus, when I hung out with the tax collectors, the sinners, people talked about him. He didn't care. He had so much light in him, he was the glory. He said, I know people make bad choices, but I'm going to show up and give them another choice. Why can't we love people to change their choice? Why can't we as believers, why can't we stand in the presence of God and say you was once lost? but now you found. You was once without hope, but I am the letter of hope to you. I know you was living in a whoremonger life. Maybe you was a lesbian. Maybe you was homosexual. Maybe you was whatever. Maybe you had 15 abortions. Maybe. 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 But I came to bring you another option. His name is Jesus. Now you can't stay in sin. You can't continuously live that choice. Because that choice is against the choice God made for you. Exactly. Are y'all hearing me? Those choices are the issue. But Jesus comes. He dusts us off. I don't know if any of you ever been through something. I've been through a whole lot of my life. I done been with drug dealers. I done had kids out of wedlock at the age of 17. I did a lot. Thank God I never got hooked on drugs and did whatever, but I don't put down those that did. Because my husband was delivered from cocaine with one visitation from God. So don't tell me God can't do it. And he'll clean you up. You'll come out of the pit. No evidence. No evidence. Do you hear me? No evidence. No evidence. No evidence. Never no evidence. No evidence. Now I'm going to say this because I got to go. The only reason you can't be excited about something, what I'm saying to you right now, is because you're not interested in what God is offering. That's the only reason why you're changing. That's the only reason why you don't want to hear this. Because the Spirit of the Lord, He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. I lift up Jesus, not myself. I didn't come to do anything. Paul said, I don't come to make a reputation of myself. It's not about me. I don't come to talk to you about what I got. It doesn't matter. Those things are going to pass away. But I come to give you, let me hold that one moment. I got to give you one more scripture. Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm telling y'all today, I feel the presence of God. I've had no agenda ever from the time I got saved, but to live for God. And sometimes when you make those kind of commitments, Prophet Marine, and you say, I just, you know, I was in so much hell. I was in New York recording an album, trying to go to Hollywood, modeling, wanting to be a superstar. My soul was so empty, y'all. I had money. I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't wear something twice because I had the ability to change my clothes, but it wasn't changing my heart. I could shop, Warren, I could shop, Kim. I could, I could go get stuff. You could see me riding in Porsches and Mercedes and all kind of cars living in some of the finest, I had a finest house. I built from the ground. When I was 23 years old, I had my dream house. I can line you up with people right now that can tell you all the material things that we have made ourselves believe we're blessed based off that ain't got nothing to do with the blessings. Can y'all give me five more minutes? Oh God. I hope you didn't erase my notes. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at this. Look at this. I found them. Look at God. Come on. Look at God. I got some notes here. Look what it says here. I want you to see what blessed means. What does it mean? 
to be blessed. The word blessed comes from a Greek word, makairos. What time we in? Kairos. The word blessed comes from a Greek word called makairos. It means being in position to receive God's provision and favor, which is an extension of his grace. Being blessed means something far more than material things and comforts and luxuries or the absence of problems. We think because we don't go through nothing, we're not blessed. You compare yourself with people that look like they never had any issues and you'll begin to believe you're not blessed. But I'm telling you, trouble is good for us. As a matter of fact, it announces that your blessings are over your life and the blessings are on their way to your house. Are y'all hearing me? Anybody dealing with something right now? In other words, favor and, pro and the pro when God provides, he provides for us and he provides even when we have lack and when others are struggling, our lives are blessed. In other words, when you're blessed, it looks different. Some people are lacking, some people are struggling, but God separates you. When others are in hardship, I'm in fellowship with the Father. When others are in hardship, say it. When others are in hardship, I'm in fellowship with the Father. Woo! Overturn the things in the Spirit. Signing off on things that God promised me. Watching God create a portal in my life and the Kairos to bring some things into the earth. But listen to this. Listen to this. Now, I was going to read the Deuteronomy blessing. He says, we blessed in the city. You know what it says. You should be blessed, diligently listen, and obey the commandments of the Lord. He said, I'm going to bless you. We got to know that. He says this. I'm going to read this because some people need to hear it. He said this. Now it should be, if you diligently listen, to obey the voice of the Lord our God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I'm commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations. Hallelujah. Now, y'all got to hear this because this is the old covenant. He said, I'm going to set you above all nations on the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and they will overtake you. If you pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God, you will be blessed in the city. You're going to be blessed in the field. The offspring of your body and, your, and the produce of your ground. Look what he says. And the animals and the offspring of the herd of the young of the flock, they're going to all be blessed. Your economy is going to be enlarged. Your baskets and your kneading bowl will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in, blessed when you go out. Oh God, the Lord will cause the enemies who rise up against you to be defeated because they will come out against you in one way, but they will flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings upon you in your storehouses. Say, my bank accounts are blessed. So go get you three or four other accounts. Y'all better hear me. I'm giving y'all some strategy now. He said your storehouses, you can't have just one. Go take $100 and open up two more. God said he's going he's to bless my, my barns. You got to give God something to work with in this season. Why? Because if you bless, you got to get in a position to receive. You got to be in a position to get, be able to recover. God's getting ready to take down. He's judging the wicked to bless who? Anybody righteous in here? God's getting ready to strip down your enemy and give you stuff that they had using against you to use against them. God is getting ready to show you off and showcase you. Hear me. I know it's hard to believe, but I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Listen to what he said. Kim, I love it. He'll do it right in the presence of your enemy. Right in the presence. He'll make a banquet table. When they think they're defeating you, God said, no, 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 no. I told them to do it. It's a trap. When they think they're getting over, he said, no, 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 le le let it go just like it's going. Leave it. Don't touch it. It's a setup. Because I'm getting ready to bless you in front of everybody that's watching. Why? Because I swore to your great-great-grandmama and your great-granddaddy and your grandmama as an everlasting covenant that I was going to recover your life and that I promised that when it came to your time that you would rise up in a different authority, that you would be able to handle these supernatural provisions. There are some things that have not even transferred over yet. And the reason why some of you have not seen the recovery of some seed that you have already sown. Why? Because it's still collecting your harvest. Y'all better. Let me say that again. Y'all missed that. The reason why, don't you get discouraged because you say, I've been sowing, I ain't seen nothing. Uh-uh-uh. When you come into a Kairos time of fulfillment, that's when they go pull up the books and they begin to calculate. Some of your stuff have not come in. Hear me, people of God. Don't you leave your position. Don't you get discouraged on this post. Some of your stuff has not come in. Why? Because your seed is out there still collecting your harvest. Yeah. 
Somebody say, it's my season. And it's my time. Somebody say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Now listen to all three of the blessings. You can go back and read it on your own. I want you to understand this, that what we find in the blessings, that's in Deuteronomy 28. Start reading 28. Start from one. Go read the blessings. There's some curses there, but that's not for me and my house. The curses is marked to go where they set to go. But as for me and my house, we what? I can't hear y'all. Well, say it. Get comfortable with it. Come on, begin to put it on you. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm just blessed. I'm blessed. Do you know when you stand in that kind of place, you, that place in the spirit, you begin to draw things be rewritten on your behalf? The houses you're believing for, the contracts begin to change in your favor. Do you know when you stand in that place, the miracle Pastor Bill gave today about his body, he said, I can't hear you, I'm too blessed. Why? Because you're trying to diagnose, diagnose me with a curse. And I'm blessed of the Lord. So it can't even stick. It can't even stick. No matter how I try, it can't even stick to me. Cancer got to go. Kidney disease have to go. Come on. Heart disease have to go. Come on. Coronavirus have to go. Lung disease have to go. Oh, my God. Y'all better hear me. Diabetes got to go. We take authority because we are blessed of the Lord. Somebody say I'm blessed. It cannot say. It came to pass. It cannot say. All of it is for the glory of God. Okay, listen to this. I'm trying to find y'all. I wrote some things. If I got to come back and teach it. To be chosen and loved by God is to be blessed. To be chosen and to be loved by God is to bless. Everything came to take you out but because of the covenant, God's been protecting you. The glory of God has been shielding you from the battles of hell. The devil has tried to take your mind and God stood to recover it. But I prophesy that in this season that you begin to wake up and recognize who you are, that you look around and say, devil, you tried to take me out on so many times, but there's something on my life the witch doctors didn't do. Come on, the soothsayers didn't do. Oh, y'all better hear me. They did not do. Buddha didn't do. Harry Christian did not do. It was the Lord Jesus Christ and the covenant that somebody in your bloodline, your grandmama, great grandma, go back and look. Somebody made a covenant agreement in the bloodline and say, I'm going to rescue her. Why? Because what comes out of her is significant. What you have to produce holds too much value and weight. And I want y'all to hear me today because it says here, I want you to know this. Ephesians. One and five, and I'm getting ready to close for real. Listen to what it says. He predestined and lovely planned for us to be adopted to himself as his own. <laughs> his own. His own. His own children. Through what? Through Jesus Christ. In accordance with the kind intention and good pleasure of his will to the praise and the glory, grace, and the favor which he so freely bestowed on us in the beloved of his son, Jesus Christ. To be chosen in love is to be blessed. And this is the blessings of the covenant. While you're thinking of all the stuff that you feel God didn't do for you, while you're thinking about all the things you just don't think measure up because you don't have the stuff you think you should have, the greatest blessing was that God chose you. The greatest blessing is that the covenant of God did not stop reaching for you. The greatest blessing is that you didn't die in sin. The greatest blessing is that God didn't let you lose your mind. The greatest blessing is that, and he promised through that. Toby, he said, I'm going to recover you. No matter what you lose, when you are blessed, when you are favored, when you are anointed, when you go and read, this is your assignment. When you go read Deuteronomy 21, 28, and 1, and you start reading the blessings, I want you everywhere it says bless. I want you to replace it with the definition I was going to give you that says bless. The definition of bless means this, even in the dictionaries of the world. Look, I gave you all the meanings of covenant. To be blessed means to be favored. <laughs> to be blessed means to be provided for. 
Do y'all hear me? He said, your shoes won't wear out. God will provide food for you to eat every day. If he's got to send a raven to feed you, you're going to have. Because I'm blessed. Look around. Somebody's bringing me a basket. Look around. Food is coming from somewhere. Why? Because I'm blessed. He says it's provision and it's favor from the Lord. It's the promises of God being fulfilled. Look what else blessed means. Blessed means to be holy and set apart. When you read Deuteronomy 28, your assignment, everywhere it says bless. I want you to replace it with favor and provision. Because it's God's grace extended to us that we didn't even deserve. Put there favored, um, favored, have provision, and set apart. Don't despise your lifestyle of holiness. Let God set you apart because that's just the blessings of God on your life. Lift up your hands. Let's pray. I pray you got something from this word today. I pray you never despise the holiness of God on you. When people say you think you this and you think you that, why your, why your answer got to be always so holy? Why you got to come back with so many scriptures? Why you got to say what God said, I'm just set apart because I'm blessed. I can't join in with it, what everybody else say. They all may be saying that, but I'm going to say this. Why? Because I'm blessed. Anybody blessed online? Anybody blessed in here? Blessed and highly favored. The blessings are overtaking me. The blessings are going to run me down. Why? Because I'm adopted by Jesus. Lift your hands. Let's pray at home. Father, we just thank you for this word today. We thank you, Father God, that it has done exactly what you meant for it to do. We thank you that it's gone into the lives of your people. Let those that have ears to hear by the Spirit hear what you are saying to the ecclesia, to the church at large. Let us no longer, Father God, take for granted what you've given us. And let us not just place it anywhere and wear it loosely. Our favorite, Father God, is not for us to have to be boastful. We don't compare ourselves with the people of this world. But Father, we thank you that that favor you've set on our lives have set us in position to be a blessing. Now, God, may the blessings be transferred to where they have already been marked to go. And may my house whole rises up to give you glory. And may my children, children, children remember that in 2021, when a famine and an ep ep a pandemic, and we was fighting through the loss of many leaving, let them remember they had someone standing to hold the bloodline to recover back all that is mark ahead. Father, we seal this word and we thank you for it today because we are the blessed of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. I want to say to you before I leave that if you're in here today or you may be online and you have not given your life to the Lord, I want to say to you, I know we got all this social media time. It takes so long. You know, you got 30 minutes to give the word and you can't go. I forget social media. People are going to run through the household of faith because they're so desperately needing God. And they're going to be looking for you on your job, in your neighborhood, in your community, because their lives are bleeding. They are hurting. And if you came here this morning, you didn't come here just to have a head war. You came here to fill your cup, open it up, and let God put something fresh in you. Because God's going to need you tomorrow. As a matter of fact, you're going to be needed when you walk out this door. Somebody's going to need what you're carrying. There's a glory in you, a light in you. God is blessing you for a purpose. And if you can be a blessing to anybody today, go out and be one. But if you've not given your life to the Lord, hear me at the sound of my voice. At the sound. Let it be today. Take a moment. If you're in here, step out your seat. Say, I don't want to miss out on these blessings. The ark is closing. The door is closing, I said. Don't be left outside of what God is doing next. If it's you I'm talking to, one, two, three. Move out of your seats and come. Move out of your seats and come. Noah was preaching. It was going to flood and rain, and the people took for granted, and they laughed. They didn't think it was going to happen. And when it rained, God said, close the door. It was too late. Don't let the door close on you in this hour that you've left outside of what God is getting ready to do next. If you're online and you say, I have not given my life to the Lord, Apostle Cynthia, I want to come in agreement. If y'all are saving here, let's pray. Maybe you all have it all together. Maybe you got it all, 
and maybe your life is good, but let's pray for somebody else. Come on, let's pray in the Holy Ghost. We extend this word to your house. We extend it to your life. Woman of God, man of God, there is nothing you have done. Nothing you have done that God can't recover you out of. Do you hear me right now? The love of God is reaching for you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Nothing can take you out of the palm of God's hands when you set yourself in it. Only you can remove yourself. And I pray today, man and woman of God, that you hear the sound of God reaching for you. Pray. Pray. The harvest fields are ripe. The laborers are few. We are worn out. Can you tarry, he said, for one hour? Can you pray for souls? Father God, we pray for our loved ones, friends, cousins, nephews, nieces, people on our block, people we don't even know who are connected. Somebody I met at the gas station I said hi to. I'm praying for them, Father God. I'm praying for the people at Walgreens, the supermarkets, the places I visit on my route. Let it be an anointing on my life that God will not show up even like you did with Peter. Let people experience the glory, the residue of your presence on me. Father God, to overturn and override every diabolical place of darkness. Father, I pray. Come on. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, I thank you for loving me, for coming into my life. I believe that you died, and I believe that you rose just for me. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for loving me and never giving up on me. I repent of all ill behavior. I tear down altars of idols. I step out of these places that have not been of you, and I give myself completely Thank you for blessing me, that I, not, I might now become a blessing for others. Father, fill me with the refreshing of your spirit, with the evidence of praying in a new language, speaking, Father God, my original language that overturns darkness. Thank you, Father, for the power now that's working in me, in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer in here, on here, online, you say, if you believe it in your heart, a contract is this. I confess with my mouth, and I sign it with my heart. It's done. It's a done deal. I love you. God bless you. I pray all of you guys have been blessed. I pray you guys continue to know we have a prayer line 24 hours. You can call if no one is there to answer. They're checking that phone constantly. Leave a message. We will get back to you. We are still in prayer, and some of us are still in fasting. We won't stop until the Lord tells us to. So we love you. God bless you. I pray you have an amazing day. I pray this word has blessed your life. Amen. Can y'all go and be a blessing? You are blessed to be a blessing. Go into the harvest fields and bless somebody. God bless you. We love y'all. See y'all Wednesday. How's it going? And I never